Hello and welcome to episode one of a brand new Security Weekly show that as of right now is being called Tradecraft Security Weekly. On Tradecraft Security Weekly, from week to week, I'm planning on bringing you eight to ten minute long episodes uh, that are basically uh, technical segments. Um, I'm going to be talking about various tools and techniques from the information security industry that range from anything blue team to red team. Um, you know, I'm, I'm a pen, pen tester, so it's just probably going to lean a little bit heavy on the red team side. Sorry about that, blue teamers. But I'm going to try to cater towards uh, blue team as much as possible as well. I'm going to try to um, talk about some possible mitigations to a lot of the things that we run on common pen tests. Um, so without further ado, let's get started with episode one of Tradecraft Security Weekly. On episode one of Tradecraft Security Weekly, I'm going to be discussing public file metadata analysis with PowerMeta. Um, pretty much every penetration test we do, we start out with a reconnaissance phase, which usually involves us trying to locate some sort of information about the target organization. Um, and a lot of times we can find that information in publicly available files hosted by an organization uh, in the metadata attached to those files. So let's, let's get started and talk about what metadata actually is. So metadata is essentially data that describes other data. Um, that's the common description that you hear um, in most places. Um, and, and most times it includes you know, the author of who created the file. A lot of times you get like the date creative. A lot of times you get the software that was used to actually create the file itself. Um, and most of this isn't actually visible to the user themselves. It's, it's attached to the file. It's metadata. Um, most common places we find this is in you know, PDFs, docs, Excel files, JPEGs. Um, you know, for example, if you take a, a picture with most cameras with your GPS on, it will actually attach the GPS coordinates to that, to that picture as well. So if you were to share that, that photo publicly, a lot of times it's, it's very, easily, uh, very easy to extract the exact location of where you took that photo from the photo itself via the metadata. Um, you know, most editors like Microsoft Word, uh, Adobe, they add in various uh, levels of metadata to the documents and, and, and files that you're creating with those editors um, by default. Um, and unless you specifically go and extract that metadata or um, you know, um, uh, wipe it from, from the file itself, a lot of times it's gonna be there. Um, so the issue comes when these files get posted online, which is, it's a very common thing for organizations to not care about the metadata attached to the files that they're posting. Um, you know, you could have, you could have, uh, you know, a, a, a very standard process for like a marketing department to, you know, post a new white paper or something about, um, a various subject that is, is, uh, you know, um, part of the business flow, right? Like their, their duty is to get new information on their website. And if they don't take the precautions to go in and actually remove that metadata, uh, from the files that they've created prior to posting them online, a lot of times they get posted and there's this other information attached to these files out there that is easily accessible. Um, so it's, it's a pretty big problem because uh, most of these types of files are, are um, cataloged by various search engines and they're very easy to discover. Um, for example, if you were to go to Google and type in um, site colon the domain name of the target uh, that you're trying to find these types of files on, um, you can actually pass it a file type uh, parameter as well to uh, specifically only pull back files of a specific file type. So you could say file type colon PDF and you'll get all the PDFs back uh, from that site that, that Google knows about. Um, you know, other ways to find them too is literally just spidering a website. You know, if you spider a website with something like Durbuster, um, a lot of times you can, you can find various PDFs or doc files um, that are being hosted by an organization on their site. And you know, in the, in the case that Google didn't find it uh, via their, their, their web crawler. Um, so previously there, there've been a couple other tools out there, but they haven't been updated recently. Um, so for example, FOCA, uh, last updated in May of 2015, Metagoofill, um, last updated in February of 2013. Um, like those are definitely some of the, the, um, the main tools out there for locating publicly available files and extracting meta metadata from them, um, at least previously. Um, but you know, they haven't been updated recently. So I decided, you know, let me go ahead and write a new tool because I want to, to have some expandability. Um, I want to be able to um, do a, a few different things that these tools didn't do. So I wrote a tool in PowerShell called PowerMeta, and that's what I'm going to be demonstrating here today. So PowerMeta, it's a PowerShell tool uh, for extracting metadata from public files. Um, right now, currently, it only searches Google and Bing, um, which, you know, those are the two, two primary search engines out there. Um, but it does 
have um, uh, expandability options that I'm, I'm planning on adding in later for other search engines. Uh, currently, it uses EXIF tool to actually extract the metadata. EXIF tool is a, a very popular uh, tool for extracting metadata from, from most files. And it does a pretty good job of, ex of getting um, pretty much all the metadata that I'm interested in. Um, it's up on GitHub at github.com slash dafthack slash power meta uh, if you want to check it out. So um, let's go ahead and jump right into um, a demo of Power Meta itself. Okay, so I've got uh, my Power Meta tool downloaded to my desktop here from GitHub. Um, I'm already CD'd into the directory where the, the files are located. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and run PowerShell. .exe-exec bypass. And then we're going to go ahead and import the Power, uh, Power Meta module. Um, to do that, you, you can do import dash module, Power Meta, you can tab it out, dot uh, ps1, Power Meta ps1. So now that we have the module imported, um, if you were looking to get some help about this specific tool, you can do git dash help, Power Meta, or uh, I'm sorry, it's invoke dash Power Meta. Um, and then you can do dash examples on the end of that. You can get a few examples um, that I've added into the help um, for it. So what we're gonna do today is we're gonna basically um, attack a, a specific target domain um, and get the metadata from publicly available files located on one of those. Um, so for a target to analyze today, I'm gonna pick one that currently has a bug bounty out there um, to take a look at. So for the target domain, we're going to take a look at Spotify.com since they have all of their domains and scope for bug bounties. Um, let's go take a look, see if there's any any files out there. So first and foremost, what's going to happen is PowerMed is going to go search Google uh, for site, the domain name that I've specified, and the file type of PDF. You can also specify um, certain file types if you want to look for other ones. By default, what it's going to try is it's going to try looking for PDFs on both Google and Bing. It'll try looking for docx files. It'll try looking for doc files. Um, it'll try looking for um, PowerPoint files, Excel files. But you know, if you wanted to specify a, a specific file type to go after, uh, you can pass it the file types parameter um, as well. And you know, whenever it it dis, it, it fin finishes up here and we have the results, you'll see that it's going to ask me if I want to go ahead and download those files or if I want to extract them at, or if I um, want to do that later. Um, but what we're going to choose is the yes option whenever that pops up because we want to go ahead and download those files. So let's let this finish up. So it's looking for XLS and this should be, yep, PowerPoint's the last one, I believe. And something, you know, too, you got to be careful with is, you know, both Google and Bing have some restrictions in terms of, uh, you know, how much you can you can hit their site. I actually haven't um, had Google like warn me yet or, or prompt for the, uh, you know, the the, um, uh, the captcha code. But you know, that's something I'm gonna add in later too. Is like the ability to, um, you know, if if you hit Google too much, um, you know, they do some rate limiting, um, and they'll start you know prompting you for captcha code. So I'm gonna add in I'm gonna add in something um, fairly fairly soon to allow you to go ahead and type in a captcha code as well. Um, to continue on with searches. So right now we're downloading the various files from, from the Spotify sites that we're gonna end up analyzing with uh, Exif tool next. Um, so once these download, there was a total of 12 files that we found on various uh, spotify.com sites. These files are being downloaded and then now, uh, Power Meta asks, would we like to extract the metadata? Yes, let's go ahead and extract the metadata. So by default, what um, Power Meta is gonna do is it's literally just gonna grab a couple fields from the, uh, from the EXIF data. Um, because I, all I'm really worried about currently is can we get usernames um, from the data? And you know, I actually, uh, I actually created another module um, that will extract all of the metadata as well. Um, but currently, um, you can see that we got some, some software titles. You got Adobe Illustrator 13.0, Adobe InDesign 2014 on a Mac. Um, and then you've got a few names in here too. So, you know, potentially like, you know, these aren't necessarily usernames, so it's hard to tell, but they are somebody's name, which 
you know, potentially you could, you know, go back and use uh, for, you know, like in your in your username list during recon. So uh, to if you if we want to actually extract all the metadata, um, I have another module called just extract metadata, and you could point that at the directory. Which you know, so by default, uh, it created this directory um, 2017, and well, you know, it's the date, the current date. So if you if you were to run Power Meta, it automatically creates that directory to store all the files in for you. Um, but you could specify output dir that, and then that will actually extract. Um, the metadata from all the files in that. But if you actually pass in the extract all to CSV, it'll extract all the metadata fields that exit tool knows about. So um, that is a demo of Power Meta. And that is gonna wrap it up for uh, this first episode of Tradecraft Security Weekly. Um, so, so to conclude, you know, strip your files of metadata before posting them online. Make sure that your various departments um, before they're you know, posting various files to your, your public website, that they're doing a couple things to remove that metadata as well. I've, I've included a couple links here um, to remove metadata from Word docs, PDFs, and photos. So um, hope you like the first episode of Tradecraft Security Weekly. I'm gonna bring more, uh, you know, in very, very soon weeks to come. Find me on Twitter at Daftac. Thanks so much for watching. Bye.